Lord, we bless your name because of who you are. Thank you for your loving kindness, as the song said just a little bit earlier, oh God. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, Jesus, we would glorify you with each and every one of them. Because you've been just that good to us. Now, Father, now that we're in your presence today, Lord, we ask you, God, to continue to be with us. Lord, we pray, Father, that you give us ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking. Lord, that every mind be brought into subjection to the Holy Ghost. Lord, help us, Lamb of God, Lord, to understand that this ain't no joke, God. Lord, help us to understand that this life got to be lived according to the Word of God. And Lord, we thank you that we are alive in 2024. Somebody just thank God that you are still in the land of the living in 2024. We could have been a lot of places. You're blessed. You made it through COVID. You're blessed this morning. Today, 
amen, to encourage it is Ladies Day. So my husband said, empower the ladies. So ladies, I'm going to empower you by asking you this question. Where is your seasoning? How many know that seasoning is very important? Salt is very important. One thing you can understand about seasoning is that the only time you speak of it is when you can tell it's not there. You ever went to a restaurant and got you a good, nice, juicy hamburger? Sit down to eat it and it ain't got no taste to it? The first thing you say is, when they ask, how was it? They needed more what? Salt. Salt is very important to every slap your mama that you buy. Your, your seasoning sauce, your meat tenderizers, everything has that key ingredient of what? Unless you're doing this as dash, but we ain't dashing today. We're talking about salt today. Amen. So it's very important. Salt is essential to the body. When you go to the hospital, what's inside of the IV bag? Salt. Mixed with water. That's right. And then when you drink a Gatorade for the athletes that are out playing, what's in the key ingredient inside of that? Salt. salt. Amen. The ocean, what keeps it balanced, the pH balanced in the ocean for the sea life? Salt. salt. Amen. When you, you know, back in the day, the older folks used to take that meat and hang that pig up in that right. smokehouse. How many of y'all know about that? Oh, yeah. I ain't that old, but they got us heard some things. Amen. You see them talk to the older, they would teach you something. Amen. They used to take it and hang that pig up and cure it with what? Salt. Salt is going to be the most important thing. When you go to the doctor and they begin to tell you you got high blood pressure, what do they ask you to do? Reduce your salt. Put back on it, but did they tell you to eliminate it? No, sir. Did you know, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not medical, I'm not a nurse, but did you know that that imitation of salt is the worst thing you All can right. use? All right, okay. It's better to use the real thing. Yeah. And then, so salt, <clears throat> being the salt of the earth means um, to enhance the world by adding flavor to it. Amen. When you cook a nice steak, you add what? Salt. Some type of salt, a man based product. My husband is the best seasoner in the world. I told him the other day. <laughs> Bless. I was asking questions. I didn't want to sleep like get my message away. I said, baby, I said, what is it about you and the seasoning? I can go in there and use, he can give me the seasoning and tell me what to put on it. Mine might come out all right. all right. But he'll take the same. Some people just have that gift. Y'all know some folks, they all can right. just pinch a little bit of this, throw a little bit of that, and boy, come out, and you like, Poof. you're going to do the same thing, and it's blank. It's messed up. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than some fried chicken without flavor. Yes, sir. I mean, chicken be pretty, but it's just as bland. Bland. Yes, sir. I ain't gonna say what we in church. I ain't gonna say what I used to say. Say it's, it's like somebody else cooking. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Say all this stuff ain't got no seasoning on it. Right. And then, so if you go to a restaurant and you purchase something that don't have seasoning, what you gonna do? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go back and say, that's okay, and I have a refund. Because I ain't gonna ask you for no more. Because if you didn't put no seasoning in that batter when you gave it to me the first time, yes, that you're not going back in the kitchen and redo it. Amen. Right. And so, salt is very and without salt, the body will shut down. The kidneys cannot function. Watch this. Your blood pressure cannot regulate without salt. Isn't All that right. amazing? Yes. So when Jesus told us to be the salt of the earth, yeah. he's given us a commandment for you to be the flavor enhancer. Mm. On your job, you need to be enhancing the flavor that's on your job. Not caught up in the mess. All right. On the weekend, are you salt the earth? Or are you being a sugar to it? Uh -oh. Behind closed doors on your phone, is your conversation bringing forth seasoning to the ears of the listener? Come on. We are so busy gossiping and being messy. This Women's Day, I'm empowering y'all. <laughs> it's time for women to get control of your mouth. Yeah. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God don't dwell in unclean temples. Amen. Does he not? Amen. We got to get control of this gossip, this manipulation, this jealousy all the time. Trying to get over the backbite, talking about one another, trying to outdo, outshine, outdress the other one. Everybody is in competition. But when you're the salt of the earth, you're going to be so busy seasoning that you ain't 
you're the salt of the earth or not. The people that you go around, how do they behave themselves in your presence? Mm. Now, we, we discussed earlier that too much salt isn't good for you. So you got to learn to have a balance. My husband know how to season with balance. If he made chicken on the grill, it's going to have a balance with the salt. It's not going to be overly salty and it's not going to be under. We've got to learn to have a healthy balance. We need to know when to speak of the things of God. We shouldn't go around trying to preach to everybody every day about everything and we got our own stuff that we need to be working on. Thanks of God, we all come from somewhere. Come on. Oh yes, we did. We were all a ugly mess. Somewhere or another. But the Lord saw fit to save and deliver us. Somewhere we should have had an encounter with Jesus. And if you haven't had an encounter with Jesus, but you in church, amen, today can be your day to have that encounter with the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? I grew up, I, a little bit of my testimony, I grew up, I didn't grow up in church. I didn't grow up, I maybe went to church, maybe around the holidays. I can't remember, we walked to church, grew up. Uh, as one of seven siblings um, in a little small town called Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Some of you may yes. be familiar with that. So we walked to church maybe once a year. We had a Bible in the home. We weren't taught to pray. We weren't taught anything. Mm. Whatever religious person came by our house, no matter what they believe in, my mama let them in okay. and let them sit and talk. Okay. Out of seven kids, yeah. I was the one that every time somebody stopped by, I would sit in the other room and I would listen. Okay. It was always a curiosity on the inside of me. I didn't understand what it was, but I would sit in the other room and I would listen to what they were saying. Mm. If someone came across talking to came and sit in the house talking about Jesus, I would listen. If they came and, and at that time they were pushing the uh, black empowerment movement. So I sit and I listen in the other room. And I would come out and I would ask questions of the person. What's this and what's that? I never knew it was a God that existed wow. yeah. until I was about five years old. I was outside playing. My brother, my oldest brother, had went to church with somebody. Never been to church in my life, five years old. And my brother went to church with somebody. We was outside playing, and I think I said something I shouldn't have said. And he said, if you say that again, God's going to get you. <laughs> and I said, God? I said, what is God? He said, he live up there in the sky. He said, if you be good, you go up there. If you don't, and he's probably about two or three years older than me. Never heard the word God in my life. Thanks to God, you think in 2024 that everybody have heard about Jesus, mm. you would be so surprised. Sometimes people right in your neighborhood don't even know who Jesus is. Yeah. Yeah. There's people that don't know about God. Wow. So we should be more salty than ever before, saints. Your light has got to shine. In 2024, we are in a very dark world. Oh, man. We need God more than ever before. Our neighbors, our children. I don't know about you, but the devil is trying to destroy our young people. Yes. Do you not see it? All right. He's starting on them six, seven, eight years old, knowing about things that they shouldn't have no idea about. And then you sit down and you question them, and they say, it just came to my mind. The Bible declares that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. This is a spiritual warfare. Yes, if you don't fast and pray, hey amen, you hear what I said, fast. Sometime or another, you're going to have to push that plate back. I know we don't like to talk about fasting no more, but somewhere or another, you're going to have to push that plate back and say, I love Jesus more than them donuts. You're going to have to push that plate back and say, I love in my 
my neighborhood. I was straight in the hood, seasoned in the neighborhood, knocking doors. We having a revival. Everybody out there, well, I don't have a car. That's okay. We get people to come pick you up. Hey, man, the saints was coming through from that temple revival, that church, bringing their personal vehicles. They didn't have no church van. Right. Brought their personal vehicles through, and they were picking everybody up that wanted to go. Mm. Knocked on my door. We having a revival. You going to come? I said, yeah, I'll come. But you know how we do. Wait till the day of, oh, I ain't going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mean, tired we do that on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> Being in pastoral ministry, I learned so much about people that if you ain't dedicated, you will straight walk away. Amen. I tell God, I said, God, I don't know how you put up with me or anybody else, because folk can be, yes, yeah. <laughs> people can be something else. I had someone that was partnered with the ministry that decided she didn't want to be partnered no more because some correction came mm. in a loving way. No matter how loving you are, season with grace. There's a season again. And then the word come forward with correction, they still gonna get mad. All right. You got people that are conditional servers. Amen. They're conditional. They're in front of the pastor. They all that and all they sweet and then, oh yeah, pastor, I got it. And then you meet Like, 
it's going to be all the soul. I'm going to just sit back here because I'm ready to go. I just felt out of place. Yeah. They were very sweet and kind. They was trying to season me down, but I'm just sitting here washing the seasoning off. All right. And so I sat in the very back, and I seen the man of God up front at that time. And they hadn't started service. I think they were taking up the offering. Yeah. And when they finished the offering, they said, if anybody need prayer, come up to the front. I didn't understand none of what I was seeing. I wasn't raised in church, so this was all awkward. And so I was like, well, they're going to hurry up and finish sooner or later. And he said, anybody need prayer, come up to the front. Different people were going, and um, if the man of God it was evangelist there. He's the one that gave the invitation. And so they were praying over everybody, and all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there, I felt this strong unction. Yeah. Down in my heart. Something you can't explain. And at the time, I was with that piece of boyfriend that I had. It didn't mean me no good. But we was just living in sin together. You know, if God don't place somebody in your life and in your path to do life with, and you link up with the wrong person, you gonna know, suffer dearly. Yes. This person was putting hands in my life, almost killed me multiple times, controlled my thoughts. I ate, drank, and breathed this individual. All right. Had so much fear in me, I wouldn't even look at another man when we were walking down the road. He was so insecure and so jealous. Got me when I was about 14 years old. I was out there, y'all. I thought I was doing everything I was big and bad enough to do, and I was doing it, but I was miserable. You hear what I'm saying? By this time, I already had two children. Raising two children with an individual that couldn't care less about me. In and out, cheating on me, doing everything that he was big and bad enough to do. And I was in my silly stage. Every woman gonna do that silly stage. Stand some grace when you're talking to these young ladies. Because you ain't always been where you've been. You ain't always did it God's way. Somebody. And so I was sitting in the back and he said, anybody need prayer? And I started feeling something. And the, the boyfriend I was with at the time, I said, I feel something. Never felt nothing like it in my life. It was something just... It wasn't a force, it was just a, a unction. It was something that said, go up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told him, I said, I feel something. And it started in here and it began to go all over my body. He said, you don't need nobody to pray for you. We can pray when we get home. Wow. <laughs> or the devil know just what to say. And like I said, this person has so much control over my mind that normally I would just automatically do what they say. But how many know when you have a divine appointment with God, All right. it ain't no devil in hell that could have prevented me from getting to that revival that day. No devil in hell that could have prevented me from going up to the front of that church that day because it was my time. And so this person was disgruntled and they was fussing. It's like God literally tuned them out. I couldn't hear a mouth was moving right beside me. But God tuned them out. Like you turn the volume down on the television. And I got up and I started walking. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I went up to the front of the church and I just stood there like this. By the in front of this the man of God and the evangelist. And I just stood there. He said, lift your hands. I ain't know nothing about that. I did this. <laughs> you know how many of y'all today just give God this kind of praise? <laughs> but when the kids run up and down and baseball, softball, <laughs> football. Yeah. 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 Screaming at the coach, telling him what he can do better. That was a foul. We, you know, we can do that when it comes to sports. But I didn't know I was standing there like this. And he just began to pray. He didn't force my hands up. This is this all I knew to do. Right. And I just stood there. And I'm just listening to them pray. Yeah. And I knew I was supposed to be up there. And he began to pray. All of a sudden, I began to weep. I just started crying. Had touched me. He didn't have a hand on my head. They were just praying. Yeah. Yeah. How many know his power in prayer? Yeah. You can't do it. Go where you can't go. And they began to pray, and I began to cry. My knees became weak. And I remember falling down.
down to my knees and I felt the, the most overwhelming love God. that I had ever felt my whole life. Mm. Nobody in the hood could give me that type of love. Yeah. Not even my own mama. Not my siblings. Mm. Not the piece of boyfriend I had at the time. It was so overwhelming. It was like this is what I needed to be fulfilled. And a lot of these young folks these days, it's a blessing that these young ladies, as I was watching them dance, it's such a blessing that they have a heart for God. Because you know how many of them are on the internet right now twerking and jerking and shirking and everything else? Yeah. Putting their bodies on display. Little bitty girls dressing promiscuous. Growing up in homes with no rules. Seeing their parents do things that they shouldn't even see them do. They need fulfillment. These young men that are out in the streets. Instead of just looking at them like thugs. How many of them are? How many of us are pushing our plate back? Mm. To say, I'm going to pray for our young people. I'm going to go on a fast for our young people. I'm going to set aside some time for our young men. Because they're dying in the street, saints. The little girls are being raped and self sex, sex trafficked. And all of this other stuff. What are we doing in the kingdom of God? Where is the seasoning? Where is the prayer in the house of God once again? Are we reading the word of God? Are we trying to help the neighbor that we see that our home is dysfunctional? Right. That used to be a time that it took a village for the young people. Right. There was a time that some folk, my mama was the type that even though she didn't know Christ, she would take every child in the neighborhood into the house and feed them the best she could. We ate beans and we ate uh, neck bones and cornbread. Right. Sometimes it was just some rice. Some white rice with some butter and some sugar and bread. Yeah. Sometimes on. we ate fat egg sandwiches. Right. But one thing about it is that she fed everybody. Right. If they needed a place to sleep, she opened that home up. Yeah. It was kids that was getting kicked out of their house being rebellious back then against their parents. And they come over there and she give them a place to stay. Never had trouble out of them. Because she showed them love. Yeah, yeah. They eventually ended up going home. Some of them went to jail and some unfortunately died. Yeah. Got killed in the streets later in life. But she never refused to turn them away. Amen. And saints, we got to have that same love. Yeah. That if I see your child struggling, I'm going to take it to heart like it's mine. Yeah. And I'm going to stand in the gap. And I'm going to pray if your daughter is out in the streets. I'm going to pray for your daughter as if it's my own daughter. When you lose the sleep, I'm going to lose sleep with you. Because we're going to get down and take a hold of the horns of the altar and begin to seek the face of God. If I got to break my sleep at 5 a.m., then I'm going to get out of that bed and I'm going to pray for our young people. Pray for your nieces and nephews. This gender confusion. It is a spirit. Blood. Well, 